Hello everyone, Max here with Fiction Rant to talk to you all about how tiny phrasing differences and even punctuation can make a huge difference even to the point of alienating devoted fan bases and basically how, you know, context matters and the particular context that you put a bit of your lore or whatever can make a huge difference. The typical example you hear is that commas are important as they're the difference between helping your Uncle Jack off his horse and the alternative. In the context of this channel though, I'd like to talk about how changing the dialogue in Star Wars Episode 1 ever so slightly would have potentially saved the series from a lot of fan grief and avoided a lot of plot holes. I'm talking about midichlorians, the microscopic organisms that live inside force-sensitive beings and whisper to them about the force or something, and are the real reason that people actually get force powers, and the more you have of them, the more potential you have. This, of course, was important in the movie because Anakin had an extraordinary midichlorian count, even higher than Yoda, which prompted Qui-Gon and company to put in extra effort to free the kid and train him. The problem is, the force went from being this mystical power to something being scientific which should really be researched and implies things like that midichlorians should be able to be harvested from one person and placed in another to increase their power, which admittedly would be super interesting, but aside from some cloning experiments which led to Snoke and the revived Palpatine, which so far have been horribly explained and they didn't actually go into the midichlorian element of it, even if that is a part of it, yeah, they haven't really done anything with the science end of this force power. In episode one, Qui-Gon had an explanation of midichlorians, which as follows, I'll just show the clip and hopefully the YouTube algorithm people won't get too mad at me. I heard Yoda talking about midichlorians. I've been wondering, what are midichlorians? Midichlorians are a microscopic life form that resides within all living cells. They live inside me. Inside your cells, yes. And we are symbionts with them. Symbionts? Life forms living together for mutual advantage. Without the midichlorians, life could not exist, and we would have no knowledge of the Force. They continually speak to us, telling us the will of the Force. When you learn to quiet your mind, you'll hear them speaking to you. I don't understand. With time and training, Annie, you will. You will. Qui-Gon is clearly saying that the source of force powers is the midichlorians. If, however, the lines were changed to more closely resemble what Obi-Wan said in A New Hope, we would have had a nice callback as well as potentially less fan rage. He could have said something like, The force is what gives a Jedi his power. It's an energy that surrounds us and penetrates us and binds the galaxy together. Midichlorians are microscopic life forms which live inside the cells of all living things and are attracted to users of the force. So if you can find midichlorians in somebody or something, it means they're strong in the force. Ta-da! Suddenly the force isn't a byproduct of being infected by the midichlorian virus. It's the same energy field it's always been, but we've added a bit of depth by adding a way for Jedi or whoever to identify force users while assessing their potential. At the same time, misunderstanding the chicken and egg scenario here would be totally understandable since wherever there's a strong force user, there's a corresponding midichlorian count, implying that the midichlorians are what's making the person force sensitive. But really what's going on is that more midichlorians exist in stronger people because they either feed on that potential or need it for their biological processes, whatever. So their presence merely indicates the force power, not generates it. Your typical correlation does not equal causation situation. A real life example of something similar could be that you know, back in the day, people thought that rotting meat spontaneously generated flies. And it wasn't until the Italian physician Francesco Redi uh, conducted an experiment where he put some meat uh, out to rot while keeping it isolated from the environment. So they discovered that in fact, flies lay their eggs on rotting stuff, so the spontaneously generated flies were in fact just born there because adult flies were allowed to land and do their thing. So yeah, I could absolutely see people making that mistake that, you know, midichlorians are causing the force. Well, no, they're just attracted to it because the force is already there. But on the flip side, what if Qui-Gon is totally correct and the midichlorians are in fact the things that create the force, which is of course the canonical explanation as far as I'm aware, Let's go ahead and double down on that concept. After all, if you're going to do something goofy or weird in your stories, you either have to downplay it or double down. So let's double down. How about a warlord who is totally unaffiliated with the Jedi or Sith, but envies them their power? Somebody like General Grievous. Now, have that guy going around eliminating all the Force users that he can, regardless of affiliation, 
and in order to harvest the midichlorians and gain more power, putting them into himself. They could then even have that because this guy has harvested the midichlorians of dozens of force users who are all whispering out the force to him, but as if they were whispering to their original host, this guy is going totally schizophrenia crazy because there really are a ton of different voices whispering to him and telling him to do things. This guy could be absolutely terrifying. Plus, the longer he went without being stopped, the more raw power he would gain with no real cap to his potential because all he'd need to do is just keep injecting more and more and more midichlorians. But what am I talking about? That would require Disney to actually do something interesting, creative, and new with the lore that they control instead of just rehashing old stories or just making up totally unrelated stories and putting a Star Wars coat of paint on them for marketing purposes. Oh well, a guy can dream. But what do you all think? Do you think that George Lucas introduced midichlorians and that they overall improve the story? Are there other introduced and then abandoned concepts and stories that you love that either need to be recontextualized or expanded upon? Let me know in the comments. And until next time, live long and prosper and may the force be with you.